Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Inspired By series and the artist we're looking at is Nick Bantock. We're going to be creating some faux postage for the mail art we created in the first video. So faux postage is creating your own set of stamps. Obviously not legal tender and you can't use them on real mail, but it certainly makes any mail art that you make look more realistic. So what I'm starting out with is some pre-perforated paper. I bought this from a company years and years ago. I'm not sure if you can still get um, perforated pa paper. I'm sure if you have a look around on the internet you may find some. But it is fairly easy to create the perforations yourself. And all I'm doing is masking off using thin washi to hide the perforations and create the area for the artwork and then some thicker washi around the side to protect the sides. Now all I'm doing is just stamping in my images and I'm going to colour them in using um, watercolours. So the stamps I'm using are from Tim Holtz and they're his Oceanic set from his newest release. To create the perforations in the paper, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. I know a lot of um, scrapbooking companies sell tools that do perforations. Um, I, I think I had a tool a few years ago from Cuttlebug that used to do it, so you just run the perforator um, along a ruler. If you have a sewing machine, just feed the paper through the sewing machine without any um, thread in it. I would use a new needle for it and don't use that needle for fabric afterwards. Uh, the other way you could do it is just put your piece of paper onto a piece of foam or the packaging from you know, meat, uh, obviously a clean meat tray and just use a needle to perforate the, the stamps yourself. Not going to be perfect but then again it shows that it's handmade so there's, there's a few different ways that you can create this sort of paper. Now the paper I'm using is just ordinary it's almost like computer paper I suppose so it's not actually designed for watercolors and that's one of the reasons why I'm um, blotting off the water as I go if it gets too watery it will start to peel I've stamped the images with um, acrylic not acrylic sorry um, archival ink which is a permanent ink and it doesn't react to water so uh, it's quite a clear crisp effect I had already done this by the time I'd started watercolouring and set it up. If you wanted to have a really, really crisp image, what I would suggest is actually setting it up in a stamp platform, stamp your images, colour them in and then re-stamp over the top and then you get that really crisp, clear black line over the top of your colouring um, if you want things to look really pop off the page. The other um, watercolours you can see me using, I've got the Jane Davenport's Bright set. And these are handmade watercolours by designs by Rachel Beth. And if you ever get the opportunity to get your hands on them, they are the most amazing watercolours I've ever come across. Um, they're just beautiful. And you can see from the metallics, um, they just shimmer and shine. So what I'm doing now is with some thin tissue paper. This is deli paper. I'm stamping out the images again to create a mask. Now, a mask is something you can use in stamping quite a lot. And basically what it is, is it protects your image from what you're going to do in the background. So what will happen is, I'll stick these images down, and then I'm going to stamp some text um, in the background and a few other different bits and pieces. This is part of a series of three videos. So the first video I did was on making the postcards. This video is on making the different elements for the postcards, so the postage stamps and some faux seals. And the final video is about how I put it all together to create almost a book within a book in my art journal. If you're in the first video, the one making postcards, I go through at the very beginning of the video a little bit about Nick Bantock, who he is, and show you some of the images from his artwork. And I also show you some of the collage elements that I've collected together and the stamps that I've collected together and you can kind of see why I've chosen the themes that I have. Um, his artwork is very unique. It has a lot to do with um, letters and writing and mail art but it also has a very um, nature 
element to it so lots of fish and birds and, and landscapes as well and all juxtaposed together so the animals are kind of out of their, their context so I, I would highly recommend you go back and watch the first video or do some research in Nick Bantop's artwork himself and you can kind of see where I'm coming from with the, the um, images that I've used to create these stamps so on the left hand side of the screen you can see this box of stamps and they're a, from a company, an Australian company called Collections which I don't think is operating anymore and about 15 years ago possibly even longer <laughs> uh, mail art was a huge rage particularly in Australia at the time and I think Julie who ran the business actually worked with Nick Bantock on this set of stamps because she's used um, Capillon, you can see it on one of the stamps there, which is a made up country that he made up in one of his books. So I'm, I'm not sure if she worked in conjunction with him or if she made this up based on him, but it's just a perfect little box of mail cancelling stamps and um, tiny little things that work really, really well on faux postage. But you could use any small stamps to do that, um, particularly with the cancelling mail stamps, because they were never. Um, very clear to begin with, you could possibly even use something like a teacher stamp and just not stamp it out very well to get that cancelled effect. So you can see now pulling off the washi carefully and I'm, I've got that effect of postage stamps now and the images sort of flow over into the different areas without me having to do much work in a very small space. By masking it off with the washi tape it makes it so much easier. When these first came out, it, yeah, it actually came with an acetate mask and I did still have that but I found the acetate was a little bit too thick um, so I wouldn't get a, a great impression up near the edges of the acetate so that's why I have chose to use the washi instead. So now all I'm doing is trying out some different stamps to see what I can stamp around the border um, because as I said before I want this to be like a limited edition stamp, a stamp set and usually they've got some decoration around the border. So this is an unmounted stamp and I'm honestly not sure where I got it from <laughs> um, and it's like the scale on a map and I thought that would tie in perfectly with what I was doing. But I wasn't happy with just the white on white. I wanted to age it up in some way. So I break out my distress inks at some stage and I age the paper. And by trimming off the excess, that helped because I didn't cut this entirely evenly when I did it. So now it looks a little bit more even. So just on a piece of paper, I've get my stuff organized. I'm using a blending tool, a blending fine tool to put the ink on and I always tend to work on a scrap piece of paper to do this and I find after numerous uses I've got a really interesting background to use for one of my art journal pages. So don't ever throw these pieces of paper out and um, just keep working on them because you can find something amazing with them. So this is the image that I've just created and I scanned it into the computer and I've created two different sizes because I wanted to use some of these stamps as actual stamps on my artwork. I wanted that original piece as well and you'll see that in the last video how it all works together but I wanted to use these pieces in my artwork as well. So all I've done is grabbed a piece of foam and um, unpicker using a ruler and just going along and perforating the edges. It's not perfect um, but it certainly works and you get the effect of the torn stamp edge really really easily so that if you didn't have that perforated paper this is a perfect way to create that effect if you would like on your page so I decided to start with the, the larger stamps to do my work and you can see me just tearing it out now these are some of the postcards I created in the first video and I'm going to be using one of the fish stamps to echo the fish on the other side and just gluing it down on my page and then getting some of those mail cancelling stamps again and just cancelling my stamps. And it's something I suppose 
when I was doing this, I was very nostalgic for it because uh, it's not something we do anymore. So this is the final piece. You can see how I've put the the original faux postage into the um, glassine envelope to stay. This is a close-up of the mail cancelling stamps. You can buy them on eBay. I did come across a set that was for sale for $90, so good luck with that. I'm sure you might be able to find them a little bit cheaper somewhere. And you can see by just cancelling those stamps and putting the little bits and pieces on it, it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. So I hope you enjoyed um, seeing how the faux postage is made. This is how I make the faux seal for one of the glassine envelopes. So I've just used some baking paper and a Versamark pad, which is a clear sticky ink, and I've stamped it onto the piece of baking paper. So the first piece was used as a mask. I'm just pouring it into the, pouring all my embossing powder into my tray, and then pressing the um, glad bake is what we call it in Australia, but it's basically a silicon paper into the embossing powder. And I'm going to continue doing this to um, build up lots of layers. Now I've seen some people do this and they stop and let it dry and then put another layer of ink on top and then reheat it. The problem with that is you are creating very, very thin layers of embossing powder which is a type of plastic and then an ink and then a plastic and then an ink and then a plastic. So it breaks really easily and it's very, very fragile. This is still fragile but by dipping the powder, the hot powder, back into the embossing powder and picking up another layer, you're actually making one thicker piece of embossing powder, which is more like a real seal. All I've done there is just stamp in, or sprinkle in a different colour, and then I've just put my stamps in. I haven't pressed them down. I've Because the embossing powder is hot, I've just let them sit on top. And because I've worked on Glad Bake or the silicon paper, it just peels straight off and you get these awesome looking seals. Um, now if you don't like what you've done, the great thing about embossing powder is you, you just reheat it and you can re-stamp it. So again, I've just placed my stamp on top. It's heavy enough with the wood on it that it's not going to be an issue and I can peel it off again. So you get something that's slightly flexible. It will become more brittle as it gets older, but it's certainly um, able to be handled so all I'm doing now is using the red liner double sided tape to tape it down um, to create my seal. And you can see it's quite an effective way to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, please stay tuned for the third uh, lot of videos to see how I've put the whole project together. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.